Now let's take a look at another scenario. I've got the same application, I've just made a couple slight modifications on the native app because what I want to do is be able to collect information about the users. I've added the button that you see here on the bottom right, which leads us to a user profile screen. And what I want to do is capture information from the user, and then I want to save this in a backend. In order to collect information from the app, we have to have a place to store that information. Now, I've already set up a Cloudant NoSQL database. Let me jump there now. The Cloudant NoSQL database is very easy to use. It has a RESTful API and allows you to store your data essentially as JSON objects. From the app, I could call the RESTful API directly, but what I'm going to do is actually call this through the Worklight server so that I can have that operational analytics and then I'd also be able to manage access to the data endpoint. So if I want to cut off access through the Worklight Management Console, I have that ability. The first thing I need to do is I'm going to copy the API URL for my database. Next, I'll bring up my command line and I'm going to add a Worklight adapter for an HTTP service that I can use to call into the Cloudant database API. So we'll just use the Worklight add adapter command, and we need to provide a name for our Worklight adapter. I will use Cloudant adapter as my adapter name, and we need to specify the type of adapter that we want to use. Because this is a RESTful API, I'm going to use an HTTP adapter. Next, you'll be asked if you want to create procedures for offline JSON store. Worklight also makes it easy to add persistent encrypted JSON store on the client. For this particular example, I'm not going to enable the JSON store, but this is something that you really might want to consider for a real world application. Next, you'll be asked if you wanna create procedures for USSD enablement. USSD is a communication technology that's used by GSM cellular telephones to send text messages between a mobile phone and an app program in the network. For this example, we can also hit no because I'm not going to be taking advantage of that. Our adapter's now been created. If we just list the directory contents, you can see that we now have the Cloudant adapter folder and, and inside of that folder is the XML descriptor and JavaScript file used to create this data adapter. So let's jump over to a JavaScript editor, in this case I'll use brackets, and take a look. So inside of the Cloudant adapter folder, we've got our Cloudant adapter XML, which defines the endpoints of the adapter. And we've got the Cloudant adapter impl.js, which is the implementation of the adapter. First, let's look at the Cloudant Adapter XML, and I need to configure this for my Cloudant database. So we already copied the API endpoint, and I'm gonna use these values to configure my HTTP endpoint. The domain is going to be the domain for my Cloudant API, and the protocol is gonna be HTTPS, and since we're using HTTPS, we're gonna use port 443. Now we need to define the procedures that are going to be exposed through the adapter. Right now I'm only capturing data, so I'm gonna create a procedure called put data. And we can save this, and now we can jump over to our implementation. You'll notice also in this directory, there's the filter.xsl file. This would be used if you were returning data from a service in either HTTP or XML format, and you wanted to transfer that to a different format, so whether it's a different XML structure or whether you're turning it into JSON. I'm not going to be using that in this example, so we can simply delete it. Now back to my implementation JS file. I'm going to create a function called put data, and we're gonna pass back a user object. The user object is going to contain the information that we're going to be sending from the iPhone application. We can get rid of the path here and get rid of the other functions that are part of this file because that's really just a boilerplate kind of template to follow. But let's keep the input variable because we can reuse this to define the procedure that we're exposing through Worklight. Now based on the cloud and API, we're going to put data into the database. So we need to use an HTTP post. So we'll change the method to post. Um, the return content type is actually going to be JSON. So we can change that. And the path is going to come from this API. Now, my database name is user profiles, so let me jump back to my editor here. So in that, we're gonna have user profiles for the path. And then we want to use the underscore bulk underscore docs path, because this is the endpoint that the Cloudant database uses to push data into that database. 
since we're using an HTTP POST, the data that we're going to be pushing into the database needs to be contained within the body of this HTTP POST. So let's add a body attribute. And for the body, we must first specify a content type. And this should be application slash JSON. And we'll need to actually specify the body content. The content needs to be a string. Now, since we are receiving a JSON object, we're going to have to use the JSON library. So we'll do json.stringify. And then we'll need to pass in our data object. But we can't pass in our user object directly. We first have to wrap it in a JSON object that's expected by the API. So we'll create a variable. We'll call it wrapped data. And inside of that object, we just need to create a docs property. And inside of that docs property is going to be an array of the objects we want to insert. Since we're only inserting one object at a time, we can just add the user object here. Now we can take that wrapped data, put it inside of our stringify command, and we've now configured the input so that we're ready to send it to the Worklight server. Now we've got everything ready to be deployed to the server, except oh, let's take out the content that I temporarily pasted there, and we'll save this file. Now we're ready to build this and deploy it to the Worklight server. So let's jump over to our console. And the first thing that we have to do is run the Worklight build command. And this will compile everything and get it ready to deploy to the server. This will deploy the newly created data adapter to the Worklight server, and we can start consuming it within our application. We can see that all adapters were successfully deployed. So let's jump over to our Worklight console and refresh. And we can see that our Cloud and adapter has now been deployed.